this place here, um, it's really ironic that I'm even here. This is one of the places that I used to do um, my paranormal investigations. I've done several here at this motel um, years ago. Before I left it all. So praise God that I did. Hallelujah. I was seeking something that was missing and now I have found that thing that was missing and that was Jesus Christ. Hello everyone, um, I'm here today at Casadega Spiritualist Camp. It's one of the most, uh, the largest psychic communities in the world. Um, it attracts uh, a lot of mediums, spiritists, paranormalists, uh, ghost hunters worldwide come here um, because this community, which is small, is made up of about, I think they said like 56 homes approximately. And in order to live in one of the homes or to, you know, buy a home here, um, according to the Casadega uh, Homeowners Association, one must be a psychic or a medium. Um, so anyway, I come to this little community today because um, I wanted to read um, and review uh, Laura Maxwell's wonderful article that she wrote for Premier Christianity Magazine. Um, so I, I filmed this a while ago um, in town where they had the sign at and the noise was so loud on the, the, with the traffic that you couldn't even hear my voice. <laughs> the world's largest psychic community in the world. So I decided to just stop here. I'm at the Casadega um, Hotel. Uh, it has a little restaurant called Sinatra's and um, I decided to come here to record it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read this wonderful article by Laura Maxwell. Um, it's Poundland's spirit board might be cheap, but is incredibly dangerous. It emerged last week that a board game which claims to connect people with the dead was being sold in Poundland. But after both Christians and spiritualists complain, the company has withdrawn the spirit board from sale. In a statement to Premier Christianity, the supermarket poked fun at the controversy. It said, we had a message from the spirits to make the handful that were left to vanish. But ex-spiritist Laura Maxwell says the occult is no laughing matter. As a former spiritualist, I was dismayed to read Poundland had introduced spirit boards, their version of the uh, Hosboros Ouija boards, to their Halloween section. The consequences of... of Using such boards are often bad and at worst can be catastrophic. And I, being an ex-paranormal investigator, can testify to that fact. Um, it's true. Um, it was worrying to read the boards, which are marketed at children, no less, um, had been very popular. It seems the company had nearly sold out before finally removing them from sale in the past few days. It, it's not just Poundland. Other companies, including Amazon, have sold such boards in recent years. In the recent past, such action would have been unheard of. But our society is increasingly embracing all things paranormal, and it is a worrying trend that should concern all Christians. My story, this is also by Laura Maxwell. During the 18, 1980s and 90s, I was a spiritualist, and my mother was a psychic medium. We were acutely aware of the horrific dangers of spirit contact. We knew of numerous accounts of unwanted evil paranormal incidences and violent spirit attacks suffered by those who sought spirits. Such harassment often led victims to depression and suicide attempts. My own mother killed herself after being relentlessly attacked by spirits for years. There are an abundance of reports in psychiatric journals highlighting 
uh, correlations between occult activity and mental illnesses and suicides. As members of the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain, my mother and I attended spiritualist churches in Goslow, Scotland. We participated in seances and other forms of spirit communication, as well as psychic spiritual healing and divination. Yet along with all other mediums there, we respected Ouija boards as being out of bounds. We all avoided them, warning others to do likewise. Most don't realize that many mediums who channel spirits endure attacks. They don't mention this to the public, to their clients or their students. When my mother and I were spiritualists, we knew this too well. Ever since I started sharing my testimony publicly in 2009, many people across the world including mediums have contacted me. Upon receiving Christ as their savior, they have experienced freedom from hellish spirit attacks. Praise God. Deliverance. The late Mark Constantino was a well-known medium who appeared on the world famous TV show, Ghost Adventures. In 2018, I interviewed his sister, Laura, who told me her brother, Mark, and, and his wife, Debbie, experienced demonic attacks for years. Laura herself was still being attacked after going to a seance years prior. On my show, I told Laura that myself and a friend could cast those spirits from her home in Jesus' name, just as the disciples did in the Bible. And I can testify this is true. And yes, we did do that. Um, I was also um, in the, um, the Skype call, and we all prayed for her. Hallelujah. Um, after that show, a few of us were overjoyed to pray over Laura over Skype, where she experienced a dramatic deliverance from those evil spirits. They immediately left her presence. Two years later, she still happily reports they have never returned. Hallelujah. And you know, I noticed that a lot of people will use sage, they'll use, uh, you know, all these other things. But these spirits always come back. And that's because the Lord is the only one that has the real spiritual authority. In recent years, there's been a global explosion of people joining local ghost hunting teams, tarot card, or psychic development classes. representation of such occult phenomena has rocketed through the media, especially through magazines and highly successful TV shows. Leading up to each Halloween, this increases with popular haunted editions and horror films. Even online, people can now learn how to contact spirits. More disturbingly, they can learn how to evoke a spirit boyfriend or girlfriend and this is true. Um, it's no coincidence there has followed an explosion in the numbers of people requesting help from Christian ministers because their homes have become demonized or possessed after such paranormal involvement. And I can also testify to this fact. Um, Laura and I both are Christian ministers and um, we have had numerous people contact us uh, needing help and prayer and turn into Jesus and leaving the occult and doing by doing this they actually really find freedom um my friend Dana Emanuel which is myself a former ghost hunter knew of paranormal investigators who were harmed during spirit communications now a Christian in media like myself she warns that Ouija and angel boards ghost boxes EVP equipment and other spirit communication tools may look innocent but all open doors to deceptive demons. What the Bible says. Mediums, also known as necromancers, are mentioned throughout the Bible. Deuteronomy 18, 10 and 11 states, There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, 
or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard or a necromancer. It says, such things are abominations to the Lord. God, our loving Father, Heavenly Father, knows these are actually evil spirits deceiving precious people and pretending to be good. Dana, myself, and countless others discovered the spirits we spoke to who eventually attacked us were demons disguised as the dead. 2 Corinthians 11:14 states, And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Due to COVID-19, many, many Halloween events may have been canceled worldwide. More people will party at home. With purchases from Poundland and other outlets, many will use Ouija boards in their own homes, perhaps for the very first time. Merely bringing one into your home attracts spirits. There is hope. If you own a Ouija board or any occult tool or book, I strongly advise that you do what I did in 1996. Destroy them and renounce them as you turn to Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts, many brought their tools of witchcraft to be burned. They repented to the Lord, receiving his loving, cleansing, forgiveness, and healing. You can experience the same today. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful article wrote by my dear friend, Laura Maxwell, all the way from Scotland. Um, Laura is an ex-spiritist. Uh, her and her mother was heavily involved in into spiritualism and just like many here at this spiritual community um, you know it's it's really sad when I look around and know what these people are facing and what's gonna um, be their uh, future if if they don't turn from it they um, talk to a few people and um, you know usually that these things are not accepted um, unless a person is willing to hear it. And I just pray that those that I have talked to um, will hear it. And, you know, I planted seeds and I hope that these seeds will grow with God's increase. It's a very beautiful little town, but anyway, it is a beautiful little town. And um, I just pray for all those here. I really do. Um, God loves him just like he loves us. And um, no one is different in God's eyes, you know, so, um, I love you guys, and I just wanted to bring you this message um, from Casadega, Florida. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. A lot of people know about this small Florida community, but there is something about this little community that many don't know. For most, the tiny town of Casadega is known as the psychic capital of the world. The spiritualist camp began around the late 1800s after being founded by George P. Colby, a trance medium from New York who once traveled the country performing seances and readings. After Colby was contacted by a demon masquerading as a spirit of a Native American named Seneca, who was claiming to be Colby's spirit guide, he traveled to Florida to found the spiritualist camp. I find it interesting that he was instructed to build this psychic community by a demon masquerading as an Indian spirit guide. I just wonder how many lives have been affected by those coming here to learn these occult practices.